This is a rebellion, isn't it? I rebel. Welcome to the Geek Legion of Doom. We're going to be talking about Rogue One, a Star Wars story by Disney. Now, this is the first spin-off movie, not including the Ewok movies, which aren't canon anymore, damn you. And uh, this one basically tells the story of the group of rebels that stole the plans of the original Death Star that precedes the original Star Wars movie, a.k.a. A New Hope. And what we're going to do, we're going to go, this is a spoiler-filled review, so if you haven't seen the movie, I suggest going and seeing it before watching this review. But on top of that, we're also going to have a little bit of a discussion about the Star Wars um, in the universe in whole and the thing, a few other bits and pieces. But first of all, we're going to go through our uh, dislikes and then likes about the movie. Mm -hmm. I'm going to kick things off. We'll go through what any, any kind of niggles that we have. Then we'll go through what we did like and then give our scores and a little, little bit of extra for you. So the first thing for me, the thing that really stood out, my biggest gripe, was the score. Now this wasn't scored by John Williams, this was scored by a guy called Michael Giacchino, who reached the, uh, I believe it was Doctor Strange uh, theme tune uh, score. And to me, it didn't really feel it was like a legitimate Star Wars music, it felt one of these kind of like um, cover bands that don't have the rights to Star Wars music, so they kind of do a, an approximation, it doesn't sound quite right. And it was kind of distracting, and I felt didn't really go with the movie. They're obviously trying to have a point of difference, having different um, composers for these kind of spin-off movies, but to me, I found it quite overpowering, quite, uh, uh, you know, it made me kind of come out of the movie a little bit. The second thing for me was um, the lack of chemistry between the characters, and this was due to maybe having too many new characters all at once, but also maybe not having the time to have the kind of the, develop these characters and have, you know, up to a point where we're really caring about them all, all that much. And I felt like if you look at, for example, The Force Awakens, we really kind of care about John Boyega and Daisy Ridley's characters, and we really kind of buy into their plight. With here, you're kind of, you're somewhat kept at an arm's length. You don't really care about them as much, I don't think. The next thing for me, and this might be somewhat controversial, because this is not going to be a popular opinion, I really didn't like Saul Guerrero, played by Forrest Whitaker. That was massively overplayed by him. And to be honest with you, I felt his camera, his uh, character was somewhat annoying and extraneous to the plot. I mean, you could have kind of taken that whole section out of the movie and just kind of written around it, basically. And I felt if that would have made the kind of the movie a little more punchy, that to me didn't work. His character was was over the top. Uh, too much fan service. This is once again a criticism that I've seen levied at this film, and this basically is where they've had a lot of winks and nods to both Star Wars movies and also other extended kind of like uh, media like books, things like that basically, little nods to uh, pieces and, and um, uh, other expanded universe stuff basically. Some of the stuff I felt really worked really well and I'll come on to that in the likes, but there were some bits where I thought, come on, it's a little bit too much, for example the Warus Man scene, things like that. CGI actors I actually have mixed feelings on, uh, I, on my, one of my positives I'll talk about that in a minute, but I thought they, they, they handled the uh, layer scene at the end. I would have maybe pulled the camera back a little bit, not have it quite as close. That didn't work, I didn't think. And when you think of movies like Ant-Man, which did a fantastic job of de-aging um, Mark Douglas, and you look at this movie, um, what's the difference? Why didn't it work quite as well? And this movie actually had a couple of plot holes in it um, that created new plot holes, actually, for the next film. For example, one of these was... Uh, we see C-3PO and R2-D2 and the Rebel base and all the ships are taking off to go into to the, the Scarif battle, but they should have been on that ship. So they, in the New Hope, they're actually on the uh, Tantive 1, is it? Five. Tantive 5. Um, but there they're kind of left behind with that shot, the blockade runner, anyway. And then the second thing, which is also a, a similar thing, is in, if you think of New Hope, when Vader boards the, 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 uh, that ship, and that happens at the end of this movie, and it just carries on into the first. He meets Princess Leia for the first time and says, and then Leia will say something along the lines of, 
oh, we were on a diplomatic mission to Alderaan. Like, no, you're clearly not, because you literally have just been fighting us five minutes ago in a massive space battle. So those kind of that line of dialogue now doesn't really kind of make a lot of sense, because why would you say that? So they're my kind of like critiques with the movie. Um, go go to Steve now, and anything you want to say about that? Yeah, so my first, I suppose, gripe would be when the film started, you get the long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. I would like to have heard the, the main theme, as you do for all the films. Not so worried about the, the scroll going up, um, but I would like to have heard the main theme. Um, the other thing for me, at times, it didn't feel a Star Wars film. Um, and I think part of that was when you skip from planet to planet or scene to scene, there was like a description in the corner of the screen at the bottom telling you where we were, where you were, what planet we were looking at. Um, other Star Wars, no other Star Wars film has that. Um, and I know I appreciate they want to make it a little bit different, but to me it, it felt like it was just another sci-fi film, um, not necessarily Star Wars. Um, again, like what Leo just said, I would... Yeah, the, the music, I would like to have heard the, you know, the main score a bit more throughout the film or variants of it. Um, that, that's probably my major gripes. <laughs> then we over to Chris now. Yeah, the, um, <clears throat> I thought it was a bit of a slow burner. It took a long time to sort of kick in. And uh, I wasn't a massive fan of um, the ninja guy. To me, it was just they put him in because you know they wanted some relevance to the force, which I don't think they really needed necessarily because it wasn't really about the force. But I think they just sort of put him in because they didn't have any sort of Jedi's or anything like that. So I think it was you know he was kind of placed in there. And I don't. I, to me, he didn't feel very Star Warsy either. So it was um, that put me off a little bit. But apart from that, so you actually got the mic, like Chris. What did you like? What was the well. Thing Definitely the return of Darth Vader, even though he only had a sort of a couple of scenes, but the, the the scenes that he was in was absolutely amazing. Really good to see him back, and also Grand Moff Tarkin to see um, Peter Cushing in his CGI form back on the screen with quite a big, big substantial role in the in the film it was really really good. That was probably my plus points on definitely on the on the picture. Do you know what? It, it makes me think, what do, what do uh, Peter Cushion's family think about sort of seeing him? Well, they obviously gave the right, so... Yeah. But it would be, it would be, it uh, wouldn't it be weird for them? Possibly. I mean, I th uh, one of the positives for me was Grand Moff Tarkin. And when I first yeah saw him, I, you know, it was quite a good moment. You know, it was when you could see his reflection in the window and think, are we going to see a bit more of this guy? Um, and when you did, and the amount of time he was in it, I thought it was great. I think they did a re really good job. Um, and I feel that, was, I think it was Guy Henry um, did a brilliant um, voice. So he, he's the guy, he's in Holby City, plays um, Henrik Hansen, the, like, the CEO of the hospital, and I thought he did a really good job. Um, yeah, I really liked it. I thought it was really good and I, I, I think you know obviously they probably get some royalties his family and obviously they would have probably given permission um, one of the things and a lot of people I've read some bits of people saying is it ethical to have you know dead actors portrayed like CGI um, I don't have a problem with it <laughs> I thought it was good it told the story well and he needed to be in the film to be honest I mean he was he's um in command of the Death Star in A New Hope so it would be ludicrous to not have him in this film um, when the major plot of the film is about the Death Star so he needed to be in it and I thought they did a good job I really enjoyed it and I liked all the scenes with him CGI version of Peter Cushing in it and I think you know if he was if it was if I was um, if he was my father or whatever I'd be you know pleased with what they did so um, sorry anything else? <laughs> <laughs> he just likes Peter Cushion and that's it that's I do thing. like Peter Cushion okay. so for me I, I like the change of tone uh, to a kind of a more uh, somewhat serious movie in regards to um, 
you know, you feel like there are casualties to this war, basically, which I maybe felt, even though you saw I don't know, Old Iran explode, for example, in the uh, the first movie, to me, I felt you felt the, the loss of uh, the good guys, the rebels, much more in this film. And for me, personally, I actually liked a Star Wars film that really didn't have much to do with the Force. Yeah. For me, I'm, I like the Force and the Jedi and all that, but... To be honest with you, back when I was a kid, I was more interested in the military side of stuff, to be honest, and the kind of the, sh the ships and Han Solo and things like that. I was actually never all that fussed on the on the, the Jedis and the kind of the Force. I know that's heresy, but to me, I actually kind of liked the surrounding world a lot more. So it was kind of nice to see a movie that kind of did focus on that. I thought the, um, the action sequences were exceptionally well shot. Gareth Edwards, who, who directed the majority of this, at least, um, previously did Godzilla, so he has a great sense of scale when we kind of see, like, the, you know, the Atats, whatever they're called. I know they're not called that, but, you know, uh, and the, the Death Star and things like that, you get a great sense of, of scale, particularly because you, you're seeing them from the kind of the Rebels, like, POV, which I thought was really good, because they, they look absolutely ginormous. And, um, you know, it reminded me of a kind of a, a Vietnam-style uh, action film, almost. So you have these kind of, like... And especially when you uh, see all the rebel soldiers, and they've almost got, like, the kind of more contemporary kind of military gear on, which I kind of quite like liked. U.S. helmet. Yeah, Vietnam, yeah. yeah. It did, and that's kind of... Uh, so I kind of like that. Oh, that, that, last, that last half an hour was, was, was fantastic. I thought it, was a, it got a little bit convoluted, like, oh, you need to plug this in over here and... You need to do that over there. It was kind of like, that could have been a little bit more simplified. But the actual action was good. And it also made you see a different side of the rebels. You know, these are rebels that have to kill people in cold blood in order to, to, to survive. This is something I'm going to come on to in just a minute, people. Uh, so I, I kind of really like that. And as these guys have mentioned, and I'm not going to harp on about it, I really love to see the kind of the, the, the Peter Cushion again, uh, the CGI version of him. So I kind of really like that as well. And... Um, there you go. So, uh, now, out of ten, what would you give it out of ten? Eight. How about yourself, Chris? Seven. I'll give it an eight as well. Now, I'm going to... Uh, I want you to rank it in the Star Wars. I want you to rank the Star Wars films. Now, I'll go first, because I've just sprung it on these two. So, just think about that. For me, personally speaking, I like um, the original Star Wars movie, New Hope. Actually, then Jedi then Empire, then this one. So I like the original trilogy in that order, then um, Rogue Rogue One, and then um, probably Force Awakens and the prequels down here, which I don't really care any order of, to be honest with you. Uh, how about yourself, Steve? Um, for me, it's Empire, Jedi, New Hope, this one, um, then... You like Revenge of the Sith. I do so. like Revenge of the Sith. You like Revenge of the Sith. Um... Force Awakens, uh, it was okay. <laughs> I've actually gone off Force Awakens yeah, a little I bit. I watched it last night, and I d yeah, it's very safe filmmaking. Yeah, it's it's very formulaic. I do like it, but it is okay. it's very safe. How about yourself? What's your order, Chris? My order: um, Empire Strikes Back, then Jedi, then probably yeah, this one, Rogue One, would come in, then probably Force Awakens. In the prequels, it would be probably Revenge of the Sith, Phantom Menace, and I can't stand Attack of the Clones, to be brutally honest with you. <laughs> Alright, so that's our review of Star Wars, but we're going to have a little bit more of a discussion about some of the things that I felt that this... Um, but the franchise now, and kind of things that I think it's been brought up. And uh, this is a question I want to ask you, Steve, okay? Is Star Wars a great white male leads in, in its in its films now we've had two films where there hasn't been a white male actor in the main cast other than well, talking about new characters uh for two films is star wars now afraid to uh, to cast its its original kind of like uh template well i think we we live in a
they do, but I feel it's obvious on screen that they're trying to do that. Does that make maybe. sense? Yeah, maybe. Um, I feel like they're trying a little bit too hard to make sure, look, this is everyone included. We've had those movies that had like Hans Zeller and Luke Skywalker in them. So now we're going to make sure we don't have people like that anymore. So it almost seems like um, it's casting by what what is best for having this diverse cast rather than what's best for any other reason. A bit of self Any thoughts on that? Yeah, I suppose. Um, yeah, they're trying to be sort of more diverse, aren't they? So you got your, you know, you have your Chinese guy you know, in this one. You got the Chinese guy, and you got the Latino guy, and you got the other, who's that other guy as well. He's um, sort of ethnic race as well, isn't he? The one that's on the ship. I can't remember his name. Riz Ahmed is Indian, I think. And then, <laughs> um, yeah, I think you're right. But again, you know, I suppose back in 1977, 1980, 83, it wasn't such a a big deal was it you know that was the kind of thing all those movies you know you would have had essentially sort of white male leads wouldn't you but um you know i guess times change but yeah i think you're probably right there maybe are a little bit of afraid to do that now yeah maybe because it's maybe because it's gone to disney as well and disney's very family orientated um possibly i don't know female roles for example like star wars now all the female roles are kind of um you know brun- white brunettes basically obviously you've got leia amazala uh, ray and now um Jyn Erso, all look more or less the same um so now you can kind of argue that um at least well two and maybe even three of them might be related so there is that argument for that but in that respect i'd maybe feel like they they could do with mixing it up maybe having a you know a black actress in a kind of a more of a prominent role um but it does to me feel like that they're checking boxes to a certain degree to try and hit certain demographics and i'm going to come on to something similar also that i feel was an also something i feel needs a little bit of discussion um and that is an excuse for merchandising so for me, and this is not only a critique of the film, but this is more of an ex- extraneous thing, but it was like, so they created all these different kind of like troopers. You've got the death troopers, you've got the beach troopers and things like that. All these different craft that we haven't seen in previous movies. And there's no other reason that they can make different toys than what the ones that already exist. And that to me is just like, when I'm watching this film, I'm thinking they're only in it so they can have sell new toys of it. Yeah, possibly. I, I mean, I like quite like the Shaw Troopers, and I like. Um, it, I don't know. You would get possibly on, you know, they're on different planets, different worlds, a variation of, um, you know, what the of armor or whatever, and what the what they wear and what the troop maybe certain troops like, you know, desert, uh, you know, U- U- U.S. or um, <laughs> British troops when they're in. Afghanistan or whatever wear certain fatigues <coughs> when they're in another environment they'd wear different fatigues so I can understand that but yeah I do, I do understand what you mean and I think that that TIE fight was I can't remember what it was called now TIE striker. TIE striker you didn't really see much of them in the film but I was kind of looking out for them and then you did see them um, I didn't really see the point in those because you don't ever see them again they're kind of like you don't see them in the, in A New Hope so um again yeah it's just a way of creating more merchandise yeah. and that's the thing i think that when 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 i'm looking at this film and the star wars films the last two films now i'm thinking they're checking boxes okay this is this is we can have such a diverse cast i mean it's going to appeal to all these different demographics now we can have all these new things that i feel I'm not always organically integrated. We have these like new troopers that we've never seen before and never will see again, basically, uh, purely so we can make different figures of them. I mean, am I wrong, Chris? Have you got any thoughts about it? No, I agree. I think it's totally for the merchandising, to be honest, because, um, like you say, the, the death troopers and all the different troopers, different ships, you know, like this is another one. There's the, um, is it the U-Wing? Mm. You got the U Wing, but well, that's never ever seen again. And it's almost some of the ships they put like the TIE Striker to me it seems a bit more like modern and developed than the TIE Fighters do when you get to sort of a new hope. 
So it's almost kind of like you've got something that looks more modern. Even the Attach, you know, they've slightly changed them, haven't yeah. they? So to make a difference, so you can't use the old ones because they're, yeah. but they're a different one. Well, these ones are cargo. They're all-terrain armoured cargo transport, aren't they? Yeah, so the point is they've changed it <laughs> yeah. only so they can have it as a different... Oh, that's not the same one. No, yeah, I see your point, yeah. But, uh, you know, it's good to have a bit of a variation, I think. And I, I do like... The divert the kind of different troopers that you see. So I, I did like the short troopers, and I, I like the them. tank driver. And I like them, but it, it just kind of it's uh, just a, that's why they're there. And I like when you saw the ATAT drivers brief, very, very briefly, because obviously in in the Empire Strikes Back, they're all padded up because they're in cold weather gear. You know, they look quite a lot different. So it, it was quite good to see that. Um, but yeah, I mean, I do agree with what you're saying. Okay. The next thing, um, it's only probably only be a brief one. So, as you may or may not know, this movie, enough mentioned, was directed by Gareth Edwards, but it had heavy reshoots um, uh, that were a, a cost of a great many millions uh, by a guy called Tony Gilroy. So, arguably, this has actually had two directors. And obviously, if you look at the the trailers, there's a great many scenes that are in the trailers that didn't make it into the final part. And apparently, the actual end originally was going to be a little different. A little bit more upbeat, um, apparently. Uh, so it's clear that they've they've kind of um, had a bit of reshooting. Should we be worried about these kind of situations? You think? No, I enjoyed it. I like the I like the fact that everybody died. Because <laughs> um, uh, you know, very you know, with throughout the Star Wars movies, they're very kind of upbeat at the end. There's always, you know, it's always kind of nicely rounded off, which is good, you know. But I think the way this t- story was told, and I think they did need to die because you never hear of them again. You know, they're not mentioned, or they're mentioned, but they're not ever seen or talked about really in any other Star Wars film. So, you know, it makes sense that they were all killed off. Um, and I like that. I kind of, I like, I like... I like the grittiness of it, and I like the fact that, um, you know, some main characters actually, quite a few main characters died. <laughs> um, I just think it adds to the realism. I agree. Um, actually, I think the final product was pretty good. Um, so, I mean, obviously, Disney, the exact Disney, clearly saw the cut of the film and they weren't happy with it. They made the decision and obviously did some reshoots, but ultimately I think that's probably probably the right call. Um, the next subject I want to talk about is one I've actually broke this before in a video, um, but I feel it's even more so uh, prevalent in this one. And this is this is probably going to you're going to have a knee jerk reaction when I say this. Does this film promote terrorism? Okay. Now, in the New Hope, I, I, I did a video a little while ago saying, "Is Luke a terrorist?" Now, let me explain why I say that. But if we, if we look at it to the this movie, so these are the rebels, basically. These are the insurgents, and especially on the film, on when we see like Jeddah, uh, the Empire is the uh, the governing body, basically. And in that that uh, scene, in particular, in the kind of the market square. We have the attack by Saul Guerrero's rebels, and that is nothing but a terrorist attack, isn't it? But this is this is how we see it. I mean, we are on this in this movie. Uh, we are witnessing it from the the rebellion side. So we know the we, you know we're in we're watching this from the POV of the, of the rebellion. So in our eyes, they're the good guys. But when we look at terrorism today, you know, the people who are in ISIS or whatever, you know. They think they're the good. They think they believe they are the good guys. So they are probably seeing themselves much like we see the rebels. So in their eyes, that they are they are attacking the West, the Empire, basically. So can can this film be said that it is a film that is positive, a positive depiction of terrorism? Chris, I'll go to you on this one. Uh, you're going to say that it's that you're bursting at the seams, but. Um, yeah, I, I do agree with what you say. You know, it's obviously like, um, yeah. If you look at it, if you look at it, you compare it to real life. Yeah, it's kind of like you know, they are going against. Even though the the Galactic Empire is essentially evil, yeah. But 
obviously it's in Paris, so if, you know, if you were attacking the government or whatever, and then you would be, you know, if you did something like that, you know, you would be looked upon as a terrorist. So yeah, I do totally agree. Yeah. Yeah, my, my problem is saying obviously, if you let's say in the real world, the terrorists, a, a real life terrorist, might feel that like the British or the US government are evil. So in their point of view, um, the government or the empire in this case, they're evil. Let's Steve, your person that seems to say something. So. I don't agree. Um, basically, if you, there are comparisons with the empire and Nazi Germany. Um, so the way I see it, the the rebels are resisting the oppression of the empire. So for me, they're not terrorists. They're freedom fighters. They are res resistance, basically. Um, so I would compare them to... So would you say, from the point of view, would you say that... So Polish... The Polish resistance that killed Reinhard Heydrich... Um, nasty piece of work would you say that they were terrorists give me, give me thing, then. so okay here's the thing one man's terrorist is another man's freedom fighter this is the point i'm trying to make so you know, because we are in the world war ii specifically we are on the allied forces so that was on our side ah, let me finish uh then, no of course we don't see ourselves as terrorists like if you look at nazi when they occupied france we had their french resistance and stuff like that if you are in the Nazi party, then yes, you would look at them as terrorists, basically. Um, but obviously, we are, we are seeing Star Wars and the, and the rebel, rebels from their side of things. So obviously, we, we will say, no, no, they're not terrorists. But, you know, you have to bear in mind that d d you're, depending on what side you are on in real life, obviously, you can see things differently. Obviously, if you are, a, you know, a terrorist in real life, you are not going to see... Uh, that we, what you're doing as wrong, you are going to feel like you are a freedom fighter. You are fighting against an oppressive government. And obviously, no one here is an actual terrorist, so we would obviously condemn any kind of actions that the people like that would take. But from their point of view, they are seeing they are seeing it to, that they're the right thing to do, for them. Um, and they would see any type of. Um, of, of like government that we have as an oppressive government who is trying to oppress their culture or whatever and therefore they feel like they're the rebels and we are the galactic empire yeah. Boom. the way i see it is see the before the empire came about so there was the jedi and, and the you know there was peace to a degree so it's like when germany tried to um take over the world that was different from the norm so they were the oppressive force they were the um they're the bad guys so because they're trying to impose their ide ideology onto other countries and other people that's what the empire are doing so i don't see the rebels as being terrorists because they're just fighting what shouldn't really be which is alien to them because they're being told what to do and they've been taken over so like when uh, people in afghanistan are fighting the america the occupying american forces there uh they're they're a fight they're a fight against an oppressive force aren't they are they not that's that's kind of an open topic i mean that's just like i said i'm not saying the empire is good or terrorism is good it's just that i think with this particular subject you know it's just about how the the ideology is packaged to we through the story i let us believe you know we are kind of we see it that the rebels are the good guys um but obviously terrorists in real life are sold that their ideology are the good guys for example and just like everyone who works for the empire do you think they are evil no, some, no of, some of them are, but some of them are just doing their jobs, and they just, you know, Absolutely. that's just the way it is. What do you think about it? <laughs> so we'll move on to the um, to the last sort of section here, um, talking about few, kind of future spin-offs, basically. 
obviously we know that we're going to get a Han Solo one next, but let's talk about beyond that. My question is, is it should we have Star Wars films that are completely disconnected from the kind of the, the main storyline? So should we have tales that are in maybe the Star Wars universe that really have nothing to do with characters or events from the saga storyline, if that makes sense? We'll go to you, Chris, first of all, on this one. Um, I quite like... Um, <coughs> I quite like them being related to the um, to the main, you know, set of films. I think you know they could do a lot more. That's kind of um, you know sort of backstories to some of the plots. I think sometimes if they go completely off the plot, I don't know. Like the Han Solo movie, I'm not sure if that's really going to work that well. They're on about a Boba Fett movie, which could potentially work quite well if they do it where he was, you know, to do with the Sarlacc pit, you know, you could do of him coming out of the Sarlacc pit and then you find out, you know, what he did afterwards, that would, could be quite interesting, but I'd rather see it, you know, related to the main plots. No, I don't really think we should see too many of these spin-offs um, away from the main plot. I think it just waters everything down. It becomes like bloody Star Trek like next generation on that and I'm not a big fan of that I think gonna get some hate now to that uh, I don't care Cheers, Steve. um I like to, you know just keep it to the main story I mean this film works because it is related to the main story but I think when you you're gonna deal with like I don't know other films that are about I don't know somebody who is very slimly in <laughs> the major plots um and again, with the Han Solo movie, I don't think it's going to work. You, for me, Han Solo is Har Harrison Ford is Han Solo. Um, you're never going to change that. I think it's just going to be a, a poor imitation, and it's not. It's not for me. It won't feel like Star Wars. I don't think. Um, but so now, I'm not a real big fan. I like Rogue One, and I think it's worked really well. But I don't think I'd like to see too many of these kind of spin-off films, where you're getting other actors to play other characters but what about what what i mean is what about having like films that are completely nothing to do with the kind of like other other characters that we've seen for example one popular idea has, has been to have like an old republic movie so you're talking like you know hundreds of years ago so it doesn't have any anything to do with the kind of the current line of characters but you can still deal with you know having like hundreds of jedi and hundreds of sith basically and stuff like that would you not be interested in seeing a movie like that? No, I just think it becomes too watered down. It's not really... For me, Star Wars... It, uh, I know it's George, George Lucas is Star Wars, really, for me as well. And I, I do think Force Awakens and this film does lack the Lucas magic. Um, and I think there's something about... I know that people have got a lot... Of, you know, there's a lot of criticism about the prequels and I, I'm not a big fan of two of those films but um, there's something about those films that has that Lucas touch to it and it's I feel that I mean this film came close Force Awakens did not for me at all but I don't know my fear is that it's just not going to be the same it's just you all the, you know if you do like the old Republic. I mean, it might be a good film, but to me, will it feel that stuff like a Star Wars film? Don't know. Probably not. Okay. For me personally, I would be interested in seeing kind of uh, you know the the law expanded beyond the kind of the the kind of the even the central and peripheral characters. I think would be quite interesting because um, I feel like you 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 have the freedom then to kind of tell stories that don't have to kind of be upholding to. Um, things that have already happened. I mean, one of the criticisms I remember with this movie is that you know the, what's going to happen at the end of the, the end of the day. So everything, and that's the criticisms of the prequels as well, is that you know everything that is going to happen has to lead to a certain point. Same thing you could be said with uh, obviously the Han Solo movie. We pretty much know all the beats that are going to happen with that movie. I and mean, I think maybe if you were to do spin-offs, it would be good to have like a character. The, the, it kind of goes off in a different direction like you, Chris mentioned Boba Fett um, 
now I always assumed it would be a kind of more of a prequel movie, but if it did have a, a sequel, he could go off and do his own thing, and they could have no they could have no interaction with anyone from the kind of the original movies again. But the, because of that, he's kind of he's then his path is open. So in that respect, it might be good. But I would be potentially interested in in stuff kind of um, uh, that. You know, it has nothing to do with it, to be honest with you. I mean, I, I always like the... the uh, I know they're not canon anymore, but like the Force Awakening games and things like that, I quite liked. And I know that the, the Thrawn trilogy was, was very popular as books and things like that. So you could introduce characters that really have nothing... But they still do have stuff to do with the original films, admittedly. But, you know, you could introduce a whole new different set of characters that just exist within that kind of Star Wars universe. I personally would like to see it. DC maybe don't. They're kind of... They like, they like, they like the fan service. Anyway, um, that's pretty much our discussion for uh, uh, for Rogue One. Obviously, uh, let us know about what you thought about the movie and any of the points that we've kind of discussed outside that. Leave us a um, comment in the, in the, in the uh, downstairs, down there. And uh, thanks for watching. Bye for now.